Welcome back to another video regarding virtual reality. In my Pico 4 review, I got a really interesting comment regarding the possibility of using your virtual reality headset as a productivity tool. We are talking about uh, replacing your physical desktop in a virtual desktop area where you have the possibility especially to replace your monitors so you can scale them, multiply them and use them and place them in a way that would be pretty much impossible in real life. The idea would be to use this virtual work area to focus on some, let's say, simpler back office work, but also some intense creative as well as industrial work cases. This is pretty much exactly what Apple's business model for their virtual reality glasses is, using your VR headset as a complete replacement for your desktop or laptop experience in an all-in-one virtual environment where physical limitations can be completely replaced by more or less holographic applications in mixed reality areas, but also the possibility to close out your real environment and focus completely on your work. This is a really interesting use case, especially in VR, because most of VR applications and uh, hardware is focused on multimedia right now. This goes into gaming as well as video streaming, but the possibilities of using it as a productivity tool is also really interesting and I think is, uh, is something that needs to be kept an eye on in the future. The first tool that we are going to try out for this virtual desktop experience is the program called Virtual Desktop. On Virtual Desktop's own homepage, they are promoting the software as a multimedia application. What Virtual Desktop more or less is doing, it's streaming your Windows desktop directly onto your VR headset. This can be done with your Pico headset like mine, but also on your Quest VR headset. To use Virtual Desktop, we need to also buy it in the App Store. Virtual Desktop was one of my very first apps that I bought on the Pico web store. It is an incredible application to stream your desktop VR games wirelessly to your Pico 4 VR headset. Virtual Desktop is more it is not really meant to be a productivity tool. However, in casting your Windows desktop onto your VR headset, you're pretty much able to do everything that you would do in a normal case with your desktop. So after connecting with virtual desktop, I had my overview. Here I can change the environments, the pass through, this galactic mist, also the, some different cinema areas. Like I said, virtual desktop is more for entertainment. However, on the desktop modus, we can scale the size. We can also change the curvature of the screen. We can only have one screen, screen at a time. Uh, with the pass through though, we can also really easily navigate our surroundings and uh, navigate also the screen. This is now me typing the very first time. The typing experience was not the best, to be honest. It was at first really kind of scary. And uh, with the time, it also really quickly became straining to your eyes because the screen, the desktop screen is crystal clear and your pass through surrounding is blurry. With the RGB lighting also, it got a little bit really quickly, a little bit of an annoyance, to be honest. Next, I started Excel. A very simple calculation, 1 plus 2, with a little bit of a layout, just testing out how it works and how it looks. Uh, the experience was very simple and very basic, so there were nothing special. Uh, generally, there was also really no lag in my experience until now. Next up, some video editing, nothing serious, just playing around, scaling, moving, snapping, also uh, trying out the UI scaling and uh, responsiveness, everything working perfectly fine. Another application I wanted to try out was Immersed. I never did use Immersed in the past. 
I knew it had some similarities to the metaverse with lobbies where you could meet people and have some conversations. However, Immersed has also a very powerful desktop application. The, on the Immersed homepage, you get pretty much all the information that you need, all the features that it offers. Also, a very, a very nice animation movie that shows you how it works. Uh, after downloading and installing the Immerse software on your desktop PC, you also have to download and install it from the web store. Uh, it is more or less free. There is a subscription-based model for uh, extra offers. Um, the probably most interesting one is the offline modus that you can use. Then you can use the Immersed app with your VR headset. After installing both the app and the program on the desktop, I launched straight into the application. After a short introductory tutorial, where I also learned that hand tracking is not supported under Pico right now, I was thrown into a large lobby where people were talking with each other. I very quickly joined into a private lobby room, which is this little coffee shop. The next few minutes I played with some of the features. There is for instance no free movement. There is a seating position system that teleports you to the selected arrow. There is also an implemented whiteboard, which is also a nice touch. And this is me the very first time drawing the portal for the keyboard. This is a very impressive and very cool feature that I really much enjoyed. Uh, however, the first rectangle wasn't my best one. Then I tried to connect to my desktop. However, I needed to make a little restart of the Pico application. And after that, I was really positively surprised how impressive this desktop experience is. Immersed automatically picked both my desktops and also added two new desktops to my overview, which was very impressive. However, I needed to set this a little bit up so I had a better work experience. I also had a little bit of a problem with the snapping of the window, of the desktop windows. Okay, this is now setting up the desktops. Also, the new rectangle for the pass-through. I, I did not only have now the keyboard, but also my mouse and a little bit extra space, so I could also lay down my controllers. Then I opened up uh, World and uh, started to type a little bit how uh, this is working with the pass-through. It's a really interesting experience seeing uh, your keyboard in such a clear way and also having your surroundings and also all this experience around you. Next up, I opened Excel and made pretty much the same calculation I did in the last example in virtual desktop, just to test it out and uh, to see how it works. Then I opened Photoshop and uh, started uh, a little bit to draw. However, there was a really interesting side effect. Um, the the pen cursor was not uh, displayed correctly. It was always a mouse cursor. I suspect it's a display error that cannot be transmitted directly from Photoshop to the web stream. Next off, I removed this screen and put it a little bit smaller to the side. And I opened 3ds Max had both them screens side by side. Then I also opened up a additional portal and placed it next to the door. So if someone would walk in or knock, I could uh, look out of this portal and uh, see exactly who it was. And uh, now I'm also modeling a little bit in 3ds Max. I was very confused how good this works and uh, how well the immersion is working. But uh, yeah, this is definitely, definitely usable.
the third and final scenario I came up with is my foldable Bluetooth keyboard and Google Docs. So we are now in the Pico interface. And in apps, there is the Pico browser, which is a web browser. In this web browser, I opened a tab with Google Docs. This is the normal Google Docs. In here, I'm now opening a little document. And now I'm typing. Uh, there is no pass through, so I have to type blindly. So I'm typing blindly, which is not my strong suit, to be honest. But as you can see, it is working. I'm typing with the Bluetooth keyboard. And it's all working pretty much perfectly. Now let's open also an Excel document. and type a little bit in here. This is a little an effect. Sometimes the Pico keyboard is being shown while the Bluetooth keyboard is active. However, I am able to type and navigate just as normal. So this could also be an emergency option. So after trying these different scenarios, I can definitely tell you that uh, Immersed had the best experience, which shouldn't be shocking because it is designed to be used in such a scenario and it definitely was the most refined and most pleasing and just from start to finish best experience I had using my uh, virtual headset as a productivity tool. I will definitely continue to use Immerse now in the future. I'm very impressed and intrigued by the software. Uh, but we come to the end of the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.